Our first guest tonight is a country music superstar. A new season of his show, Barmageddon, premieres Monday night at 11 on USA, and tickets for his Back to the Honky Tonk tour are on sale now. Please welcome beautiful Blake Shelton. <laughs> Thanks for coming on this special night. In however many years I've been in this industry, I've never been introduced as the, the beautiful Blake Shelton. Well, I like it. I, like I it. say it's high time. Me too. Yeah. Thank you. And you look beautiful. You are beautiful inside and out, Blake, I will say. And I feel like you. I feel like America knows that. I'm going to take that in. I'm not I'm even going to take it. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you accept it because it is true. I know a bit about you. I know what's going on with you. Okay. I know you're a, a good man. And uh, and by the way, the CMA Awards. You got. You know how? Do you even know how many of them you have? Well, they I told me before I came out here because I thought you were going to brush on it. I, it's ten, right? Ten is right. Yes. Ten. ten is right. I thought ten was a good a good even number to kind of walk away from those on. Like ten's enough. I'll stop being successful there. So has, Although a dozen would be nice, because then they could all fit in a box, like, perfectly, you know? And they're very yeah. pointy, too. They're actually a dangerous... They're the most deadly award of all the Is awards. Is that true? Those American Music Awards are... They got a sharp edge on them, too. They huh? are, but the Country Music Association Award has killed more, more people. Americans than any other award. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember your first time at the CMAs? Yeah, it was... Uh, well, the first time... I may have been in the audience once. I can't remember which award show it was, but I, the first CMAs that I was on was 2001. 2001. And I remember I had a, I'd had a song out that had done pretty good, good enough that they asked me to come do one of those uh, like commercial bumper moments where it's like, hey, I'm Blake Shelton. And I got to sing like 20 seconds of the song and Tune in next for, you know, Garth Brooks or whoever was coming up. And I was scared to death. I you were. Remember. Oh. Just being terrified. I'd never really been on television before. And and I, before I walked out, I remember, did you want me to tell a story? Because I've really just launched into one. Right here. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I want to hear all about okay, it. I mean, yeah. I think it's interesting. We because got time? You've been on television so much and live tele, I think it makes people <laughs> feel better to know you were scared of being well, on television. I was. And so I was standing there off to the side and... And Billy Ray Cyrus had just presented an award. Okay. And, and he walked over and he said, and he introduced himself to me, which I was just in shock of that even, you know. And he said, you all right? And I go, man, I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death right now to walk out there. And he's like, what do you mean? I go, I've just never been on TV and I got to sing. And he goes, hey, man, listen, even if you do great, this is the music industry. Most of those people are gonna make fun of you and roll their eyes anyway, man. It's like, this is the music industry. You need to toughen up a little bit, man. People make fun of you. I remember, like, that was his pep talk to me. What, that's the pep talk? That was his pep talk. He probably doesn't remember that, but I'm telling you right now, as a young 23-year-old kid or whatever I was, I was like, oh my God, you're right. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't. If you have a mullet, yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. Billy had had a rough stretch <laughs> at, at that point. That's right. If you put the words achy and breaky in the title of your song, yes, people are going to make true. fun of you. True. Do you give people pep talks? Do you ever do that? Spot people and just give them a little something before they go on? I think if I think they're really going to do good, I will. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll ride the wave if it's going good, you know? <laughs> you were on The Voice for, and I can't believe this, 23 seasons. I guess you do like two seasons oh a year God, or three, three seasons a year. Just vodka, what? Just vodka. And then as soon as you left, your wife Gwen came back to the show to do the show. I mean, like, well, I mean, I think I'd actually put out there to the press, too, because everybody wants to know, like, why are you quitting? You know, why are you walking away from the show? And it's like, well, for the family you know, <laughs> for more family time. And then the very next announcement was, well, Gwen's coming back. <laughs> so maybe she doesn't want too much family time. I don't know. 
had money, you guys... money talks, okay? <laughs> money talks in this industry. You guys, had you coordinated that? Because it seems like it was, could have been handled better. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I mean, if it, if it shows you anything, you know, like we're completely not involved in each other's, you know, decision making when it comes to our careers. You know, yeah. she's Gwen Stefani and that's its own machine, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? And so it's like, oh, wait. Oh, you're going back? Because I just quit. I just, so I'll catch you next next spring. I'll see you. And the Blake Shelton machine is actually a tractor. It's a real machine. It's not a... <laughs> that's what I... I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to feed the family, you know? Uh... Like, you have, we're, we're a single income family now, so... You've been making... Uh, you make videos from time to time on the tractor, and I want to share uh, one of them with the audience. Yeah, baby! I'm writing this song as I'm planting my seed. I ain't got time to stop, and I might have just peed. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Are you going crazy out there? What's happening? That's, that doesn't seem like a stable person. <laughs> It I, is, though, it's interesting to look into your songwriting process in that way. You know? I mean, that was live was as it was being written in the moment. <laughs> I like to give people a, a glimpse of what it's like. Your tour starts when? You're back to the Honky Tonk Tour. Uh, it starts in February. Uh, February. I, I don't have, I don't know, the, 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 towards the end of February. Thank you. And we start over in uh, Pennsylvania, I think. Uh, is that just when Gwen gets home, you hit the road for that's the That's right. Tour? As soon as she wraps up, it's like, <laughs> hey. It's your turn with the kids. I got to go. I got to go to work. You're starting in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Hershey, yeah. yeah. Hershey. And, and, uh, and I, I don't know that I've ever... I played in Harrisonburg, I know, over the years, but I don't know that I've ever actually played in You'd remember Hershey. Hershey. It smells like chocolate. The whole town smells like chocolate. It's, okay. I mean, it really does. It I, really does. Yeah, it does. They have a park there, Hershey Park. I used to go there when I was a kid sometimes. And uh, they have, like, uh, street lights, have candy kisses on the top. People think I'm making this up, but That's some of you like know it. it's true. <laughs> I just watched Willy Wonka's. <laughs> no. uh, like, this is like the real okay. thing. This is the real. Yeah, you need to know well, this. Well, as stuff. if I wasn't excited enough about the tour. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you, I'm fired up. I can't wait. You have, and correct me if I have this wrong. On this tour, you have the largest bar in the history of it's, music. We haven't registered yet. In, yeah. In, uh, With the, Guinness. The Guinness Book of World Records. But I'm just going to say it. It is. It is the largest. <laughs> Bar in the history of thank you and the bar that's, that, that's important to me. I know it is. And yeah. my artistry. I know that's it important is important for me. The size of the bar is yes, key. Yes, yes. It, it's, it's how a, big is the bar? It's it's uh, it's got to be like it's more than half the arena. Like it goes three quarters of the way out into the arena. It's my like catwalk thing that I go walk out on and, and people, people could come up and, and get the, drinks. Oh, there's peanuts and there's dollar bills and it's just. Yeah, it's great. And you're stepping in like Budweiser and stuff, or That's how is that, that working? Yeah. Yes, it's just, I love it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you do. I love it. Well, you have a yeah. whole show. Actually, let's take a break. Blake Shelton is here. He's got a show called Barmageddon on USA, and uh, I want to get into that when we return. We'll be right back with Blake. We're back with Blake Shelton, uh, season, um, season two of your show, we got, we got a second season. You got a second season out of the show. It's a fun idea. You and Carson Daly, your pal from The Voice, mm -hmm. my old friend, came up with this idea where you get celebrities competing against each other in bar games. Carson's so stupid, by the way. <laughs> you got to, literally, he's been, he started, to, I know him so well. He started texting me this morning because you guys were talking and he's yeah. like, and he thinks he's tricking me because he's like, oh man, you know, Jimmy's excited you're going to be on the show tomorrow. T wanting me to take the bait that I'm supposed to be on the show tomorrow. I see. Right? <laughs> and so at first it were, I was like, oh, t no, I think that's, I was, oh, idiot. He's trying to, <laughs> and he sent another one later like, hey, maybe I can go to dinner tomorrow after the show. Or whatever. He's not so good. he was actually I'm sorry, that's sidetracking. He was sabotaging again. your that's... booking on this show is what, the way a, I he's see it. He's such an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know. Yeah, But, yeah. yes, we came up uh, with the idea. We were actually, I, I think I've told the story, but I, we were hanging out on the set of The Voice during the COVID days and when, like, the crews were stripped down and took forever between setups. And so Carson and I would be drinking uh, in one of our dressing rooms waiting for the next setup. And you know that show? There's a show on called Holy Moly. I've, yeah, right. And I hope it's I don't on ABC. sued yeah. for talking about uh -huh. this. Oh, yeah. 
I said, man, wouldn't that show be like next level good if they were drunk? Trying to do it would be so much funnier, right? <laughs> and that is literally where the what idea show wouldn't be better right. if everyone was drunk, though, if you think about it. I know it. And so the games that you guys like, there's a game called um, sharding, <laughs> which is provocative. You can name. play that with people in the room or at, at home alone. You, <laughs> it's a, it's, and why is it called sharding? Shart, shart, sharts, sharts. Yeah, yeah yes. sharts. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I, I like sharding because when you're playing it, you are you're sharding. Sure, yeah. You're uh, sharding. Sharts is it's it's stupid. It's it's darts mixed with the name Shelton. That's about as creative as we get <laughs> on Barmageddon. It's In like, fairness, oh, how can we say something you know ridiculous? How can we get away with calling it sharts? In fairness, you guys are hammered. So I mean, right. there is an excuse. Most of there. the games on the show, it's first the name of it is thought of, and then there's a game invented because we want to be able to say sharts gotcha. or just the tip or whatever the name of the game right. might be, you know? Right, so, right, right. You know, you guys are dying to see our show now. Right? So you got, it's, so then you have the celebrities come in, yeah. um, like uh, Kelly Clarkson plays against Michelle Rodriguez. By the way, Kelly, if you've ever wondered what Kelly Clarkson is like when she's been drinking a lot, you've got to watch Monday. She's, I mean, it's, she is drunk. <laughs> uh, by, the, by the end of the show, I don't care if she gets mad at me for saying this. I got what I needed out of her. And she's already been on the show. I got her on the show, so we're good now. And the I'm talking about inside. wasted on, uh, on Barmageddon. It's you incredible. compete against your wife, Gwen, on the show yeah. as well. Yeah. And was that, like, do you get, are you actually competitive when you compete against uh, Gwen or anyone? I try to be. I'm, Gwen, that's what the funny thing about Gwen is, it's in the entire amount of time that I've known her now, I've never known her, even on The Voice, to be competitive. She's more of just like this supportive person with her contestants, but I've never seen her as like super competitive until she plays against me <laughs> on Barmageddon. All of a sudden, it's like, you know, you know, flipping me off to my face. Oh, really? It's really close to my face. Did it carry over You're at going all? going down. It's your home I've life? never heard her say, let's go, like Tom Brady. <laughs> She never said let's go before. Now she's saying let's go. I need to ask you about a story that was, you told some like small magazine a story about a, the fact that you had a pet raccoon when you were a teenager. <laughs> How did really you get do a, your research here. Uh, we do. Uh, yeah. How did you get a pet raccoon? Well, I lived out in Oklahoma. Uh -huh. It wasn't hard to come by, uh, you know. <laughs> a, 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 a but raccoon. this is like a raccoon you put a leash around. Yeah, I really raised the thing from, from a baby, like bottle fed it and, and raised it. And, um, and at the time, I remember, I can't believe we're talking about this. At, yeah. at the time, uh, wine coolers were very popular and they were on all the, you know, Arnold's, Arnold's and James. And James. Right. So I named my raccoon Seagram's. <laughs> so his name was Seagram's. And, and, uh, and, I, and, and the reason I was probably talking about this is because there's a, there's a picture of me floating around out there on the internet, I was on the cover of the uh, Ada Evening News, Ada, Oklahoma. There it is, right there, with with my raccoon. You Some lady, I was know. walking down the street with my dog and my raccoon, like you do in Ada, Oklahoma. <laughs> and she stopped, and she was like, "Oh my God, is that raccoon just following you, or is it your?" I said, "No, it's my pet," you know. <laughs> And she took a picture and they put it on the cover of the, of the newspaper. <laughs> wow, you're destined for fame, even from a young age. <laughs> and now you have given a, a special gift to Carson Daly's daughter, <laughs> who happens to be my god goddaughter. Yeah. You gave her this beautiful, and I don't know if this is Seagram or <laughs> this actual... That's an actual taxidermy. That's not Seagram, though. That's not Seagram. I, know, I, did, I don't raise pets to then have them taxidermy. That seems... <laughs> A little too far over there, but I did give that. That was at my house randomly, and Carson was at the house, and 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 London, his his middle daughter, uh -huh. just fell in love with this thing. It's like, what is wrong with your kid? It's like, <laughs> it's like up on the counter, like holding it and petting it, and and they were there for you know it was like a week. They came and stayed with us, and by the time they were going to leave, I was like, she's got to take this thing. Like it's going to break her heart. They're dressing it. They're putting clothes on it, and. And so that's, that picture is in Carson's house. It lives at Carson's house now. Yeah. That's... And he's been able to get away with never having to buy his kids a pet. Because he of... Does, yeah, he's like, oh, my God, man. They, they're, like, so into this taxidermy raccoon. Did you name this raccoon. pet? Or... No. No, it's, no, its name it's, is Raccoonie. I do know that 
my cousin Michael taxidermied that raccoon. Is that right? 30 well, years ago. Beautifully done, cousin Michael. Yeah, I mean, a, who would have ever known? That cousin Michael does yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, uh, you know what? You're the real You're deal, right. Blake I am, Shelton. I am beautiful on the inside. <laughs> and, uh, I will say that. At least you're not stuffed on the inside. Blake Shelton, Barmageddon, Monday at 11 on USA. And back to the Honky Tonk Tour. Tickets are on sale now. We'll be back in good time.